about uh, a little over four years ago, I had an accident. And um, I was being treated for about a month. And I went to visit this doctor, and he took one look at me, no test or anything, just from eyesight alone, and said, hey, you got cancer here. I don't like what I see. And that was the, that was the beginning of my journey. <laughs> um, and from that point on, I was striving for, uh, a, it's obvious, a penal transplant a couple of years before they were even invented. Well, and, the... Um, the, the, the tests initially revealed that you had a very aggressive form of cancer and the only way to save your life was to have this operation that would remove most of your penis. I mean, being a man, facing that, the knowledge of the fact that this is going to change your life, it's going to save your life, but it is very much going to change your life. How did that feel? Well, you can't get too many volunteers. I belong to a special club here. <laughs> I'm, the only, I'm the president, the secretary and the treasurer. I have no volunteers, so that tells you how, how, how it feels. You're, you're a very lonely person. One is a very lonely number, like the song. And uh, it, 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 it sure as hell doesn't make you feel good when they're taking your manhood away. Mm. You have no idea what life is going to be like from that point on. Yeah. And it was but a, you have to make a decision. Yeah. And, it, and it was yeah. quite a, a rigorous process, of expectedly, it was. It, you were two days in surgery, is that right, Thomas? Yeah, so it started on the day before Mother's Day at 6 o'clock at night and finished on Mother's Day at 10 o'clock in the morning, 16 hours. And, wow. it was, and it was a successful surgery, which I'm sure everyone, uh, you and everyone around you, was so relieved about. Uh, but you, you couldn't bring yourself in the first couple of weeks to actually look and, and, and see what it was like. And when you did do that, it wasn't exactly what you expected, was it? Well, it looked like I got mugged. It was black and blue and <laughs> swollen. And, and uh, you know, you have to be honest about it. You know, you, you never know what you're going to look at. Uh, uh, my, you no, know, I'm just like everybody else. The human psyche is, should I or shouldn't I? Uh, eventually, I took a peek and, and I learned to live with it. it looks pretty, it's starting to look pretty good right now. And how do they find a match? Because obviously, like any sort of organ donor, there's going to be bloods that need to match. You go through a process, a very rigorous process, of um, making sure that psychologically you're OK to go through this because you're going to have to not only physically accept it, but mentally accept what's, what you're going through as well. So how do they find a match? Well, there was a protocol of about 12 weeks. I had to go through a series of tests. Um, physical and mental t uh, examination. It was a very stressful time because during this preparation, I, I ran into a roadblock. I, they, found, they, they discovered that I had a heart condition, and it, it stopped everything uh, in its tracks about a month before I had the actual surgery. Um, I, had a, uh, I went to see a cardiologist for a stress test, and they said that I had a calcified valve aortic valve, and um, they put me on an inactive list. So from that point on, I became very, very aggressive. I didn't want to say, I wouldn't take no for an answer because I had been fighting for this for four years. Yeah. So what, so what I did was I, made, I had the transplant center make arrangements for a cardiologist, and then I turned around and I called my primary care physician, and I had her do the same thing. And, they, and, and the transplant center came back and said two and a half weeks uh, before an appointment. And my primary care doctor's appointment was seven weeks. I wasn't going to wait seven weeks. No. So I called up, I called their office and told them, look, you get any cancellations? Call me right away. And Two why, days later, they got a cancellation. Can I ask you, Thomas, why was it so important to, to fight for this for you? Because after your initial surgery to remove the penis, you were left with a sort of one-inch stump, I think it was, in order to go to the loo, you had to sit down. And so you, you were single at the time, so sort of sexually-wise, it wasn't really an issue for you. But why did you want to get that back? Was it a manhood thing? Is it because you hope one day that you'll be able to become sexually active again? What was the reason? Well, I think, I think it's better off to... Let me change this subject for a second. 42 years ago, Betty Ford announced to the world she had breast cancer. She had a mastectomy. That was 42 years ago. 42 years later... Well, not quite 42. Let's go back. It was 38 years later, we'll say. They amputate my penis. And unless they amputated... Unless they amputate your penis, 
You'll never understand what it's all about. Yeah, mm. yeah. No, oh, no. Okay? Yeah. You'll never China. understand what it's all about. Okay, you, there's different little things that matter in a person's life. Yeah. And I and and I I confronted my own issues, and my issue was they amputated my penis. I always believed that there was a possibility of a transplant, and. I just kept fighting for yeah, it. Yeah, well, well done. I mean, it is incredible. I and mean, you sort of, this is only uh, the beginning, mm. really. I mean, this sort of treatment, uh, I know that veterans are a major focus for the work as well. Um, so, I mean, it's amazing. Well done to the team that, that did this for you. And also, thank well, you so much. Go on. Well, I, I was very lucky to have the doctors, the surgical team. Mm. I mean, the, the surgeons that worked on me have worked on some very, very famous uh, transplants in the past. I have a Dr. Citrullo, a Dr. Coe, mm. a Dr. Uh, McGovern, a Dr. Winterbred, yeah. a Dr. Feldman, and the list goes on and on. There's almost 50 people in that operating room. Well, they've done an amazing job. Um, thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. It's been and lovely to talk to you. Good luck with everything as well. Good luck, Thomas. Thank you so hey, much. Hey, guys, you're not... Wait, let me ask you something. You're not going to let the audience ask me any questions? I'm surprised. Well, I tell you what, we're going to get comments coming in all morning yeah, well, and we'll read some of those out. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Well, thank you, Tom. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. He was live. Why? I know, I, I like know. Him. I like it. What an amazing story. I know. Anyway. Must have been a really tough story. Hello, YouTube. For more of the same, just click here. And don't forget, you can subscribe for even more of these amazing videos exclusive to our channel. You know, a lot of men that do suffer from body image issues, not just women. It's, it's a universal problem that a lot of us have. And it's something I still struggle with, especially since I've become pregnant. My body's changing. I'm kind of having to, like, readjust to this new body. Uh, but growing up, it was really hard because of being bullied. Uh, but I learned very quickly that you have to surround yourself with people that are positive and that support you. And I've kind of just carried that on through my adult life.